Welcome to Time with Ty, where we focus on mastering the rhythms of life, parenting, and sobriety. My name is Ty, and with God's help, I started a nonprofit called Spiral Light. We help women in recovery and moms through media and meditation. As always, friends, let's get started with a deep breath in preparation for a 60-second meditation. Putting one hand on your heart, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in. And taking another deep breath in and breathing out. Okay, my loves. So today I want to talk to you about mercy. And the actual definition of mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Now that sounds very heavy. It is. Mercy is often referred to in terms of, um, you know, war, right? Or having mercy on someone. These are really heavy, deep concepts. Someone who's punished you, showing someone that has punished or harmed you forgiveness. Now, if you are spiritually attuning or have any experience in personal development, you can probably guess the next thing that I'm going to say, which is the person that we most often need to have mercy on and with and for is ourselves. I think that's the whole point and the crux of personal development, right? We're in the, pro the process of getting better. We're in the process of progress, hopefully progressing towards feeling better within ourselves, being able to treat ourselves better, more kindly, with forgiveness, having compassion for ourselves, as opposed to justifying negative behavior or actions, being rude or inappropriate or lacking forgiveness, judging others, right? These are two sides of the coin of personal development. And the thing with mercy and the thing with forgiveness is that we don't have the capacity and we technically do not have the ability to give it to someone else if we can't first give it to ourselves. We have to be shown, we have to have the courage and the wisdom to show ourselves and to go through this healing process with ourselves. Then it's genuine, then it's real, then it's tangible. The energy of forgiveness, when your heart is cracked open and it pours out, in empathy and compassion, understanding, unconditional love for another person, that's powerful. And how can we know that energy if we haven't experienced it ourselves? I was at the Mercy Center in Auburn, California the other day. It was a really interesting. I had this window of time and I didn't know what to do. And I think most people here know that I'm in recovery, um, hence life, parenting, and sobriety. And I had this window of time and I didn't know what to do. And I thought, oh, I'll go to, an, to, I'll go to a meeting, right? As part of my system of recovery, I attend meetings with other folks that are also looking to progress in their recovery. And it was just one of those weird time frames where there was absolutely no meeting happening in my area. And I could have sat in my hot car and I could have logged on to an electronic meeting that happens 24 hours 
a, a day, but I really wanted to have an in-person physical experience. And then this thought came into my mind and I thought, I'm really close to Auburn. I'm going to go to the Mercy Center. There's the, they, they have beautiful grounds. It's a retreat center run by dedicated group of nuns, I believe. And if I'm wrong, please forgive me. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, but it's just a beautiful place that I've been to for a, a recovery retreat before. It's a beautiful place where I've often gone to to walk the labyrinth. To my knowledge, it's free and it's open to the public. It's not heavily overutilized. And then they have a way of the cross. So in my mind, being an interfaith individual, a practicing Christian yet interfaith, open and accepting of Buddhism, Hinduism, agnostic, atheism, whatever a person's belief or non-belief system is, as a practicing Christian, I do not judge. I choose to observe, to accept, and to respect that people have their own choice. I am not a Catholic, yet I pray the rosary daily. I am not a Catholic, yet I go to the Mercy Center because the spiritual energy that I feel on these grounds and in this place is so palpable and so positively intense that it is, it's, it's a cup filler. I walk away from there feeling like my cup is filled, that I am so powerful and I have the energy and the focus and the determination to do anything. So I wisely chose in this blanks, you know, rather than going, I wanted to go to Ulta and buy makeup, you know, that I had the thought of going to some other stores and being a consumer and spending money, nothing wrong with that. But I went and had my spiritual cup filled. And as I walked the way of the cross, and as I started to think about the areas in my life where I've fallen short, where I haven't given myself grace, where I haven't given others grace, or where I felt that grace was withheld from me, this translated into all of these ideas and concepts around mercy, grace, forgiveness, compassion, really powerful, I, I don't want to call them tools, but really powerful states of being that we can embrace and that we can study and that we can hopefully embody. I think that's the point is to figure it out and share it. And as I walked through this beautiful property and just in prayer and in complementation and in meditation, it, it, was, it was filling and it was emotional. There were a lot of tears shed. Places in my life in which I'd shown up differently, places in my life in which I, I wish other people could have shown up and been a different, better version of themselves. And within all of that, there was a rebalancing. If you think about scales, right? I think that's the, the horoscope or the astrological symbol for maybe a Libra, I think that's what it is. There are two scales and they're balanced. And walking in without an agenda and walking out feeling balanced, charged, and relaxed simultaneously, it was... Honestly, I feel like that integration of masculine and feminine energy, it was the yin and the yang. It was the dark and the light. It was an integration of experiences, of energy, and of possibilities, frankly. I share this with you, friends, because I would like to inspire you and I want to encourage you to find a sacred space in your town, in your country, in your community, in your county, Maybe somewhere in your own neighborhood. Maybe it's in your backyard. And you have like my, my friend Erin over at All Saints Yoga. She has an amazing yurt on her property where she invites the community. Anybody from the public can come and take a class and get their cup filled. I want to encourage you this week to find that place where you're either going to go and practice with someone in your community, a prayer, a meditation, a contemplation, read a book quietly to yourself, just sit and have a cup of water, observe nature, birds, a tree, and give that time to yourself. If there's something on your heart, if there's something nostalgic, if there's something that needs healing, if you're going through the steps, right, as a person in recovery, whatever you may be going through or embracing as this summer continues to unfold, we're right at the top of it, I invite you into a sanctuary space to find that sacred space. I know oftentimes we feel like we need to go on a multi-thousand dollar retreat 
That's possible for some, not possible for others right now yet. But you can find that space and take that hour or two and go into a nice, deep, self-caring practice. I love you, friends. Let's take a deep breath in. And out.